What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So I had quite a bit of an incident today. So I was playing football um, as usual on Mondays and Wednesdays and I have gotten a ligament tear. So I was kind of running with the ball and just heard a crackling noise in my right knee. Went on the ground. Uh, it was quite painful. Uh, I thought it was going to be a fracture. I thought it was going to be much worse, but got an x-ray done. Uh, the bones are fine. It seems like it's uh, just a little bit of a ligament tear, which is still pretty fa painful and uh, just uh, not able to walk 100%. So that's that. Um, so hope you all enjoy this video. I'm going to be on a little bit of painkillers uh, right now. I am recording this video at quite late, so almost at 3 in the morning uh, because I just got back from the hospital. So again, I do apologize for the delay and again, just if I sound a little bit doozy, but again, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the markets here, break all of that down. Uh, very, very flat day, so slightly down on the day here for the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow Jones. We're going to take a look at the technical analysis on, of course, all of big tech stocks here. And uh, again, like I said, as always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful. I would really appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. Uh, that's all I'm asking in return is, of course, uh, the link to our Discord and Patreon is also going to be down below for that 16% annual discount that's available until the end of this month. So if you are interested in joining us, of course, uh, you know, get access to all their trade alerts and the trade ideas and members only private videos. All of that is going to be down below with the link in the description. So this right here was the state of the market. So we had Nasdaq again slightly down 27 basis points, S&P 500 just over 5,200 and the Dow Jones a little bit over 39 thousand at the moment so again very very flat day uh, a lot of individual sectors were you know either slightly down or somewhat flat so we didn't really have a lot of momentum for anything except for i would say energy sector energy sector as a whole performed really well so that was the only sector that was up close to one percent uh utilities were slightly up and then everything else was either flat to down on the day in the last one week, again, industrials continue to outperform. Energy, technology, cyclicals continue to outperform. Real estate is pulling back. Consumer defensives pulling back a little bit. In the last one month, again, energy seems to be a big leader because if you come over to crude oil, um, you know, U.S. crude oil is up. It's up on the week, 1.5%. And in the month of March, we have seen a 4.5% increase in crude oil prices, now sitting at just under $82 a barrel. So very, very significant move, uh, you know, in the overall month of March here. And not to mention from the beginning of 2024, uh, crude oil is up a whopping 20, 21%. This is eventually going to play a bigger and bigger role on overall inflation. So that is something to keep in mind because inflation, of course, is what's going to dictate where interest rates go, which in turn is going to dictate where the markets go. Cocoa prices up almost 8%. Lean hogs, you got orange juice all pushing higher with feeder cattle and live cattle slightly down uh, and then of course we got Bitcoin here sitting at just over seventy thousand dollars so pushing right back up uh, up to that resistance here we're inside this red rectangle that we've been talking about and ether here back up to over 3600 uh, you know pushing right back above that resistance once again volatility if you'll notice uh, was selling off intraday so we did open up at over 13.67 um, and traded all the way down to 13.2 so a little bit of an intraday pullback here in the volatility up still over one percent on the day now the 10-year treasuries for example the 10-year yield is also incredibly incredibly critical here for markets overall direction and momentum and uh, it did push up back up to over 4.25 percent it's really just consolidating sideways in that range at the moment the 10-year yield and right now we're seeing a lot of consolidation like i said in that range if it doesn't end up pushing higher to up to five five and a half percent then of course the markets are not going to take that well and uh on the way up already we'd be we'd be noticing and witnessing a lot of pullbacks and corrections in the market uh, on the contrary though if it starts to roll right back down if the 10-year treasuries let's say comes down to low threes or mid threes uh, that is going to potentially create a bigger and stronger momentum for the market because the risk free rate is coming down and valuations are going to be much well uh much better much betterly supported uh, much strongly supported compared to if the if the 10-year treasuries are sitting at 4.3, 4.5%. Now coming over to S&P 500, so SPX here continues to trade in this uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. However, the last three days, what you'll notice is that after the gap up, we're basically coming back down to fill the entire gap. Our side continues to stay a little bit more elevated. 
uh, with over 64, and the MACD also, of course, sitting at well over 57 um, at the moment. So, you know, of course, we did see a bit of a breakout after the FOMC, and support level is going to stay put at 51.87 down to 5,200 on the S&P, down to as low as 5,000 points. Now, coming over to the NASDAQ, so IXIC, again, very much in a bit of an uptrend, consistently validating its higher highs and higher lows. And right now, it's just sitting inside this red rectangle. Uh, much stronger support, as we've already discussed, inside this green rectangle. Sitting roughly at 14,450, 14,500, down to as low as 12,000. 750 to 12,800 for the Nasdaq as well. So again, lots of momentum, very much to the upside, broad based rally here. I've done a couple of technical analysis on the markets already, so make sure that you do check that out. Uh, but overall, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback intraday. Doesn't mean anything right now. The trend is still very much in the favor of the bulls. We're still very strongly in an uptrend at the moment. Now, coming over to Apple, and Apple here continue, continues to consolidate sideways, so a little bit of a doji candle here on the day, so that suggests a lot of indecision for Apple here. Resistance is going to stay at roughly 195, 196, with, of course, a huge support sitting right over here at 169, 170, down to as low as 152 for Apple as well. Oversold uh, and still has momentum and potential, in my opinion, for a 15, 16% rally back up to its all-time highs back in the 190s and 200s for Apple here. Amazon, on the other hand, is already starting to consolidate at its resistance. So that right there is going to be a level to keep in mind. Sitting roughly at 178, 179 um, for, for Amazon. And of course, support level down to 159, down to $143 per share. Still very much in the context of an uptrend. Now, Amazon, I would argue, is one of the fewer stocks along with NVIDIA, along with AMD, along with, let's say, Microsoft, that's trading in an uptrend, that's trading in a very strong momentum higher and alongside its moving averages that are also showing a very strong uptrend. Tesla, Apple, um, you know, I would even consider Google to some extent, uh, still are trading in a little bit of a consolidation to slightly downtrending pattern because they are either making lower highs and lower lows or they're basically going sideways. But Amazon hitting new 52-week highs almost every day. Meta trading at all-time highs almost every day. And of course, not to mention NVIDIA. Uh, and even Netflix, for, for example, has been trading in near close to its 52-week highs uh, more recently. So very strong uptrend for that stock as well. Coming over to Tesla, speak of the devil. And this right here is going to be that resistance up to as much as 176. Still in the context of a downtrend, as I mentioned earlier, we got a little bit of a bullish divergence on the RSI compared to the price action itself. So there is a possibility that maybe the low is already in and resistance is going to stay put up to 1676, 177 for Tesla moving forward. Uh, talking about NVIDIA platforms here and NVIDIA, of course, continues to push higher NVIDIA platforms. That's the doozy as that I was talking about earlier in the video. Um, so 76 base points higher, um, 951 is where it's at. I actually did a video on NVIDIA earlier today and where NVIDIA stock will be seven years from now with my future price targets based on a bear case, base case, and bull case expectations. So make sure that you do check out that video to get more insight on NVIDIA and its future. Advanced Micro Devices uh, essentially was gapping down, but intraday there was some buying pressure to push higher. 178 is where we are. Support level is going to stay put at 164, 165 for advanced micro devices at the moment. Uh, and then, of course, we move over to PayPal and Visa. And PayPal here getting some nice momentum higher. So, once again, outperforming the SP, the NASDAQ up over 1.9%. Support level is going to now stay put roughly at around $65, $63, down to as low as $57 for PayPal. So, those right there are going to be some levels to watch. Of course, lots of consolidation sideways in between that range for PayPal and next resistance and target is going to be $76, $77. And we are still within the context of a downtrend with lower highs and lower lows. However, of course, we'll find out soon enough if PayPal can finally break through from that downtrending channel and start actually moving higher. Visa, on the other hand, two back-to-back -back red days for this company. And uh, right now, I would argue that it's still very much in the context of a little bit of an uptrend. So you can see that it's coming up down to its higher low, which ideally would be considered as a reasonable support. And a much stronger support below that is going to be sitting roughly at around these levels in the 270s. So 273, 274, some of the levels to watch in case Visa breaks down from its higher low. And then, of course, below that, we're going to be watching a much stronger, much better support in the 249 and $250 for Visa. Uh, talking about Meta Platform and Meta on the day was also slightly down about 1.29%. 
So selling off, support level is going to stay put at 477 down to $454 per share. Very strong area of demand in and around these prices over here for, for Meta. All the way down to $386 per share for the company as well. Talking about Netflix, Netflix here continues to rally higher. And uh, again, like I said, 52-week high is incoming uh, with a support level that's going to stay put over here now, sitting roughly at 624 down to as low as $540, another support to keep in mind. And of course, we got a huge gap to potentially fill for Netflix. So this right here is going to be a gap that Netflix may or may not come down to fill here eventually. Uh, going over to Google, and Google's already been trading at a resistance of 150s. And that's exactly why I feel like we're seeing a lot of consolidation for the company. We're not able to successfully get a bigger breakout here because the spying momentum or the uh, essentially the buyer stepping in the money flowing into Google has started to exhaust a little bit or stabilize. And even though the RSI, MACD, everything kind of played out perfectly, we're sitting at a resistance. That's important to keep in mind. And the 155s, 154 for Google. And of course, a very strong support sitting right over there at $130, $131 per share for Google. Uh, and then finally, of course, coming over to Microsoft and Microsoft here getting a bit of a pullback down about 1.3% and uh, support level is going to stay put inside this green rectangle for Microsoft and support level is going to stay put down to around $397, $400 with the RSI MACD also suggesting for a bit of a pullback from these levels. Enphase not having the best day uh, down about 3%. Support level is going to stay put at $108, $109 per share. So very, very strong area of support. For end phase at those levels and resistance is going to stay put up to 138 139 for end phase moving forward all the way down to 92 dollars per share and then finally we come over to costco and costco here just consolidating sideways at the moment support level is going to stay put at 711 down to 678 for costco so you know when it comes to just having a actionable plan uh for the market i think the best approach as i've already mentioned for me, at least myself, that's what I'm doing is dollar cost average into broad based ETFs and index funds. Uh, and of course, select sector industry ETFs as well, whether it's semiconductors or cybersecurity or renewable energy, whatever there is, there's going to be more of a thematic investing style where there are specific sectors and industries that I do believe have a ton of potential long term. And that's exactly what I'm investing in, where I'm investing in at the moment. Now, in case we see a bit of a pullback or a correction or a dip in the market or S&P starts to drop 4, 5 percent, 10 percent, and the Nasdaq here also starts to see a bit of a correction, that's when I will start to deploy cash a lot more aggressively into individual stocks, right? So then we're talking about Teslas and Enphase and, you know, even PayPal to some extent or advanced micro devices or Amazon, a lot of these big tech stocks or whatever presents value at that time is when I will start to deploy cash back into the market. But until then, it is just sitting tight, enjoying the gains, enjoying the momentum to the upside, trading at all time highs, almost at, you know, pretty significant levels. And the market still has upside, the momentum's there, but we just have to be cautious that, okay, this rally is not going to continue forever. Nothing continues and stays, uh, you know, the same, the same way forever, right? So eventually we are going to see a pullback. We are going to see a correction and the better prepared that we are, the better off we will be to take advantage of those opportunities. So also keep a close eye on the volatility. Because when it does spike, it is a one of the short shot buying opportunities, a serious buying opportunity in the markets if volatility is trading above certain levels. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. If you're interested in joining us and getting access to all the members only private videos, trade alerts and trade ideas, as well as all the newsletters and of course the members only private videos as well. So always happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.